This tree is the oldest living thing on Earth. Nearly 5,000 years old, it is called Methuselah, named after the longest lived of all the biblical patriarchs. Enduring droughts and storms, it was a seedling when the pyramids were built. But this tree is not in Egypt. It grows near Las Vegas, on a remote hillside. Methuselah's hidden connections to thousands of years of human history are only now being discovered. No one paid much attention to this living fossil until one man became obsessed with extracting its secrets. Relentlessly, he probed, uncovering clues to our prehistoric past. His discoveries led to a startling idea that this magnificent tree could hold the key to immortality itself. But the Methuselah tree has an enemy. Will it survive to let us unlock its secrets? Funding for NOVA is provided by the Park Foundation, dedicated to education and quality television. Science. It's given us the framework to help make wireless communications clear. Sprint PCS is proud to support NOVA. This program is funded in part by the Northwestern Mutual Foundation. Some people already know, Northwestern Mutual can help plan for your children's education. Are you there yet? Northwestern Mutual Financial Network. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Your roots go a long way back, two and a half thousand years before Christ was born. Twenty-six foot tall and still growing, you are the oldest living thing on earth. Rock solid and transfixed, you have taken life slowly, unlike our human race. That's us down there, Las Vegas glowing in the desert. Are you sad? Are you jealous? If you could speak, what would you tell us? Once you had a Garden of Eden, now you have this. A playpen in the desert, bliss. Here, 5,000 years of civilization can be experienced in an instant. Have a nice day, enjoy, for in a flash, it could all be over. Emperors, deities, craven images cast in plaster, neon lit. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. The smell of money in the air, a tawdry sans et lumière. are mortal, they were once flesh and blood. Escape the delusion, the noise and pollution. The true immortals are made out of wood. They call us bristlecone pines. They call me Methuselah.
You live in the White Mountains of California, where the climate is so harsh, little else can survive. It's no surprise you look more dead than alive. Adversity is the secret of your success. You've taught yourself to thrive in this parched landscape with little food or water. Like wartime children brought up on a meager diet, you far outlive your vigorous cousins further down the mountain. Your scrawny bodies atrophy on the outside, while preserving a hidden vitality within. You survive on a lifeline only 10 inches wide, a strip of bark-covered tissue which manages to carry all essential nutrients from your roots to your needles. The slow pace of life keeps you slim. We humans could take a leaf out of your frugal lives. It takes a hundred years to add an inch to your waistline. Could it be that deep within your cells you hold the key to immortality? Your secrets seem safe in this rocky wilderness until one day in 1957, a scientist walked into your life. The scientist's name was Edmund Schulman, and he was about to make the most exciting discovery of his life. In the cross section he removed from your body, he counted over 4,600 rings, each representing exactly one year of life. By inspecting the width of each ring, he could tell what kind of a year you'd had and whether the climate had promoted growth. Hidden within your trunk was a record of weather and time of unparalleled age and accuracy. bristle cones were 1,500 years older than any other tree previously studied. Having found the oldest tree of all, he named you Methuselah. Methuselah, Methuselah, this shulman christens me, for he has counted the candles on my cake. 4,600, am celebrity now, and no mistake, am named, am given voice. The years, like necklaces, bestow a wisdom shulmankind will never know. Millennia, they come and go, have no eyes but have seen it all. Ancient civilizations that you can only read about, Methuselah has sensed, am not part of history. No, history is parts of me. Two thousand five hundred and sixty six BC. Not long after you'd taken root, the largest stone building in the world is about to be occupied. King Cheops had built the Great Pyramid of Giza as a tomb for himself. He is lying on his deathbed. The Pharaoh exhales for the last time. His breath contains millions of carbon dioxide molecules. Imagine those molecules of spent breath cast adrift into the atmosphere, riding the jet stream, crossing oceans and continents. A 
a few reach a land that would later be called America. Perhaps you were too young to remember. You were a mere sapling when one entered your body through a tiny paw on the needle. Drawing energy from the sun, you split these molecules asunder. The oxygen is for us, the carbon for you. Your complex chemistry bonds the carbon atoms into sugar that fuels your growth. And that's how a molecule from a dying breath can give life to one of your new cells. When King Cheops died, you were nine inches tall and only 77 years old. During your first thousand years, civilizations and the world beyond come and go. Then one day, you had your first encounter with humanity. These hunters were Paiute Indians who for 3,000 years followed longhorn sheep into the White Mountains, leaving behind evidence of their brief visits. You getting much over there? Not much, just a few flakes. Oh, here we go. Well, this is a, a naturally occurring volcanic glass, obsidian, uh, that's extremely abundant in this part of the world. This is a, a volcanically active part of the world. Uh, it's very easy to work uh, and produces extremely sharp edges. Um, it's uh, wonderful for us as well because it can be sourced to particular flows and so we can use it to uh, understand where people are coming from and where they went. Uh, we can reconstruct in, in quite a bit of detail the annual rounds of people at different times in the past by looking at the sources of obsidian that they, they collected and used. From the location of the obsidian lava flows, archaeologists have established that the Indians would cover a distance of 150 miles in the course of a year. In the six weeks of summer, when the weather opened up the mountain tops for hunting, they would venture up to your domain. Uh, small groups, uh, probably mostly hunters, uh, would come up to these highlands, uh, hunt for a period of maybe a few days or a week, uh, try and, and, and get some meat, uh, maybe even dry it or partially dry it, and then return down to the, the valleys where living conditions were a little better. This is an extremely harsh environment. The air is thin, uh, the wind is, is, is incessant. It is not a comfortable place to be. Uh, here it is, the, the middle of, of July, and I'm wearing a, a down vest to give you some idea of, of just how harsh conditions are. One summer, it was so cold that it left you scarred for life. The few cells that grew that year were damaged when the water inside froze up, expanded and burst the cell walls. Tree rings were examined under a microscope. The jagged black line clearly showed cell death in the year 1627 BC. What could have caused temperatures in that year to fall so dramatically? Could tree rings be a record of some cataclysmic event in another part of the world? 
Unlike words, tree rings never lie. One year was freezing cold and dark. The sun was hidden in the sky. I tasted brimstone, and it left its mark like a new stone.